Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Andy Dow, as Jill just said, and I'm presenting a research into Thought Cloud on behalf of my co authors, John Vines, uh, Rob Comber, uh, Comer, sorry, and uh, Ra Rob Wilson as well. Um, and just quickly, the principal function of Thought Cloud is that of a feedback gathering system that was designed in collaboration with a care organization partner, um, and it allows uh, organizations to commission feedback, collect and review feedback from service users, and in this case, when I'm talking about feedback, I mean collecting the opinions or views of service users about services that are important to them. So, uh, just a little bit about feedback generally, first of all. Feedback is an important part of how organizations gather information about experiences people have of the services that they provide, uh, even products they sell or events that they run as well. However, it's not only important for commercial organizations, um, but equally within health service and social care service provision as well. And now new models of health and social care service provision in England have seen service user opinion take a much more central role. And uh, for organizations delivering care or support services, um, uh, feedback fulfills a, a variety of important roles. So, uh, I've listed a few of these here. It increases accountability of service providers to their service users, uh, provides insight uh, for understanding how services are working uh, and operating, um, and for developing services as well to generate new ideas to create new services. And particularly with respect to not-for-profit organizations uh, and voluntary and charity organizations, it helps to create evidence for funding applications and demonstrates uh, that funding criteria are being met. Uh, and it's within this specific context uh, of not-for-profit, voluntary, uh, and charity care sector organisations providing support services that the, we were do that we were working uh, in designing and trialling the Thought Cloud system. Um, so, in uh, in England, uh, social care service provision, or what might be termed uh, human services in the US, uh, represents a wide range of services that support people with. Uh, learning difficulties, uh, physical or cognitive impairments, uh, or those who might have mental health problems, their carers and their families as well. Um, in the past, uh, such services are primarily delivered by the state. However, increasingly they are provided by NGO, not-for-profit, voluntary and charity organisations. And as a result, um, while not-for-profits may work in conjunction with the state, uh, they do require to attract additional funding through funding bids uh, or raise funds through private donations. So uh, for those organizations delivering support services to people um, with learning difficulties, they're working with a, a heterogeneous group of people that represent a wide range of care needs. So and, uh, something that is a given uh, for all these uh, organizations is that they require to, co to collect uh, feedback on an ongoing basis and traditionally uh, that's the, that feedback's been gathered by various means so uh, form filling, tick boxes, postal questionnaires, interviews, uh, testimonials, uh, focus groups as well as occasionally uh, some more creative methods such as video recording. Um, oh, did I just skip a slide? No. I just got a piece of paper. Oh yes. I didn't skip a slide. I do apologize, and we shall continue. So there are <laughs> various challenges um, that we might expect around collecting feedback. So it can be costly and time-consuming to collect, so especially for organizations who have limited resources and uh, uh, who may have a limited number of paid staff that are required to fulfill uh, a wide range of roles, um, or may also rely on the time of volunteers uh, that have a varying amount of time that they can commit. Uh, there's further challenges in collecting feedback from people with learning or communication difficulties that may struggle with written forms or reading. And uh, such individuals may require uh, help from a support worker or proxy, uh, helping them to complete forms. And as a result, their view uh, might be interpreted or mediated in some way, so leading to their voice being misrepresented in the process of giving feedback. And, uh, and finally, it's a deeply political space characterized by uh, competing services uh, that have a vested interest in gathering good feedback and to show themselves in the best possible light. 
And this also applies to those leaving feedback as well. Um, if they depend on a service, they want to see it continue, they might be reticent to um, leave uh, negative, offer negative opinions or be uh, highly critical. So, into this landscape of, uh, la landscape rather, of mixed service delivery, we've designed ThoughtCloud. Um, the design requirements listed here uh, were produced, as I said, in collaboration with a not-for-profit care organization in the northeast of England. Uh, that uh, organization provides services to individuals with a wide range of support needs. Um, and these services include uh, referral services, advocacy work, um, but also skills building sessions, uh, as well as social events and leisure activities as well. So one of the many activities that they do run uh, is a knitting group for ladies with dementia. So um, that means that one outcome of this research is that I now know how to knit, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and I also became a volunteer with the charity as well during uh, this process. So. Um, that allowed me to explore some of the issues surrounding feedback in more detail, as well as helping me to understand everyday organizational practice, uh, meet service users, and uh, discuss with staff members and volunteers some of the practical issues uh, that they face collecting feedback on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and there were also uh, uh, opportunities for me to witness feedback collection uh, firsthand. So, so what is ThoughtCloud? What is this thing I'm talking about? Well, basically, uh, this is a picture of it here. It's an Android tablet app, uh, principally. Uh, this can be, uh, we place it on a tablet stand, uh, visibly, uh, at the point of service use. So whatever an, an event or an activity is taking place, um, uh, we can take it along. Uh, it poses questions, so you can see here above these rating buttons, there's a, a question being posed there, um, and uh, it poses proposes questions that are defined by organizations and collects feedback both in the form of these Likert style ratings that you see here, um, which we actually use to encourage an initial interaction with the system, but then it moves on to a further screen, selects another question from a bank and asks the user if they would like to leave an audio or video reply as well. Uh, that feedback is uh, sent to a secure server where organization staff can log in and review the data collected. Um, so in brief, it allows organizations to commission feedback, uh, so determine what type of feedback they want to get, uh, capture both structured and unstructured uh, feedback as well, and, uh, and uh, gives them the opportunity to review and assess feedback with a view to uh, having an impact or developing uh, services. Um, and to, to study ThoughtCloud, our study was designed, well, not just to assess its efficacy as a feedback gathering system, but also to explore uh, what a system like this can be for and how it can be meaningfully incorporated into organizational practice. So to that end, we conducted field trials, and I'll talk about them in a little bit more detail um, uh, in a moment. Um, and that helped us to better understand its role within the practices of organizations providing care services. Uh, it also gave us a chance to observe it being used and make field notes on interactions with the tablet and the use practices that evolved around it when it was used after events uh, being run. And following those field trials, uh, we conducted interviews uh, with staff members uh, to give us an idea of how it was working. Um, and we, we sat them down and got them to talk out loud as they went through the feedback uh, that had been collected, so they were responding to it, um, and we interviewed them uh, to get an idea of just how helpful that feedback could be, and also to get their thoughts and what we, they would do with the feedback going forward. So really thinking through uh, how the system could be more meaningfully embedded in what they do, uh, and also addressing how they might respond to feedback as well. So in terms of addressing any issues highlighted by service users, um, and these interviews uh, were coded and organized into themes. Uh, additionally, um, we analyzed the audio and video captured for its content and what that could tell us about how service users responded to the system too. Okay, so um, just a bit more detail about the field trials. It was trialed over a one-month period. Um, this was with two organizations. So the original organization um, we designed the system with and also with a local independent cinema uh, showing dementia-friendly cinema screenings. Uh, ThoughtCloud was taken to six events altogether, so a knitting group, a drama class, and a well-being workshop with the not-for-profit organization, as well as three cinema screenings, uh, too. Uh, after events, it was placed visibly, so either in rooms where events took place, outside the entrances, 
uh, to those rooms, or in the case of the cinema, in a cafe within the same building uh, where many of the audience went following the screening. Uh, so altogether, these events or activities were attended by 169 people, and we recorded 121 interactions with the system. Um, and an interaction could be as simple as someone just leaving a rating and then not going on to leave an audio video message. And most people did not go on to leave a message for us. Um, uh, as I've noted here, only 45 actually went on to do that. So here are some people using ThoughtCloud and leaving feedback with it. Um, the people were self-selecting, as is often the case uh, with those who do choose to give feedback, but we didn't want to force people uh, to feedback if they didn't want to. Uh, in many cases, people preferred to have it removed from the stand so that they could give feedback sitting down and actually pass it around between other people. Um, now that set up did mean that giving feedback could be a very public experience um, so people would just give feedback in full view of others so as I say sometimes even just sitting at a table uh, over a coffee as you can see there uh, on another occasion when it was on a stand um, people actually queued up to give uh, feedback using the system as well however it is designed to be flexible enough uh, to be reconfigured uh, quickly in these circumstances um, and I should say, some people found it very difficult to leave feedback unsupported. So in some cases, family members uh, would actually put words in the mouth of people uh, as they were recording a video. Um, so one lady was saying to her husband, uh, you enjoyed the film, say it. And he was just repeating that uh, into the camera. Um, and in another case, um, uh, after an activity, the, the activity leader actually just stood and interviewed people um, while uh, they gave their feedback as well. So uh, that meant that in many cases, people didn't even answer the questions that the system uh, was posing to them. So, and sometimes they would just say whatever came to their minds. Um, but it was in that sort of unstructured space uh, that some of the more interesting data was collected. Um, so though, although we did have the Likert data from the ratings, uh, when we spoke to our participants, uh, what was primarily valued was the video and the audio that was collected. Uh, so I'd just like to focus on a few examples of those now and tie them into some of the discussion points uh, and the contributions that we've included in the paper. However, um, if you want to read more about that, it's available at your leisure. Okay. So... If people weren't answering the questions uh, that ThoughtCloud was actually asking them, uh, what were they talking about? Well, on one occasion, um, and this was while service users stood in a queue to leave feedback, um, a, a service user used the system to report that she felt that she'd been bullied or picked on throughout a session. Um, now, this was thought to be familiar behavior by that service user uh, when we spoke to our participants. And uh, in response to viewing this feedback, one staff member said, um, I wouldn't wade in and do something really heavy because I just need a bit of clarification. I'll probably talk to the person leading that activity and try to work out what's gone on or talk to the person who left that comment. So there's definitely a concern here that the system has to be used responsibly, um, that those operating it uh, should think carefully about its placement and make sure that service users feel safe to leave the feedback that they want to. So, for example, perhaps setting up a private space um, where people can leave feedback without being overheard. And for us, uh, this raises the question uh, of how the system should be operated. Okay, no, I've missed the second quote, haven't I? Sorry about that. Uh, so, um, however, it was acknowledged that it was important to make a space and make opportunities uh, for these types of critical and potentially highly sensitive comments to be made as well. So in this case... Uh, there was a concern that the comment had been made in a semi-public space in the building and that any persons involved in the comment uh, might have overheard uh, such a recording and that led to this, the second staff member uh, that's quoted here commenting, the person who's in charge of the tablet uh, has some role in offering a more secure environment to feedback if that's what someone needs or wants. Um, so as I said, there is this concern that it needs to be used responsibly uh, and it, those that do operate it need to think carefully. Uh, about how it's placed. So for us, this raises the question of how the system is operated, who have, who, and additionally, who has access to the feedback as well, uh, since comments were demonstrated of a sensitive nature, uh, and also the resultant impact this has on accountability, accountability and transparency, since the organization had initially envisaged that they would make this recorded feedback available to all. Uh, and this leads us to suggest uh, that if a system such as ThoughtCloud is to be used on an ongoing basis, that there must be a consideration of establishing specific roles staff members or volunteers themselves have 
uh, in relation to it, as well as the responsibilities that would be connected to those roles. Uh, and this brings me to a, set, a final example. So, and this was when, at the end of a session, uh, the tablet was brought out. A young woman actually got up and left the session. Uh, this, uh, the young woman was a selective mute, and that's a, a condition whereby, although she can speak, she chooses not to uh, in a social situation. Um, however, she immediately left the room. Now, other people who were taking part in the activity just thought, you know, it made her uncomfortable, and she'd wanted to leave. However, this was not the case, and she actually came back to the room, saw everyone leaving feedback, and she requested the tablet um, to, uh, and used it to record her own voice. Now, the very fact uh, that she used the tablet to record her own voice and to express how much uh, she enjoyed one of the activities that the organization ran uh, was considered uh, unbelievable, uh, actually, by the staff that knew the service user, and responding to this feedback said, uh, she as an individual has traveled a personal journey from when she first came here, virtually not talking, to now feeling that it's a safe place where she's comfortable and she's able to volunteer feedback, and going on to say, uh, what we have been doing is produce some dividends for this person, and that this, uh, is ev this recording is evidence for it, going so far to say that it was like gold dust. So, to staff, this feedback was seen to validate one of the organization's principal aims. Uh, however, such insights into the feedback were only made possible by the staff member working to interpret what, what was said and then contextualizing that within a narrative of what was already known about the service uh, user. So, uh, considering the narrative contextualization uh, the staff were able to make um, and their ability to identify and respond to service users, it was suggested that there was actually potential for organizations to use the system not just as a means of gathering feedback, but as a means to track development of specific individuals over time. So, for example, looking uh, uh, if they are achieving goals uh, that they, they're working towards, such as attaining life skills. And uh, uh, we feel that this shows the value of properly embedding uh, a feedback technology like this within the organizational context. So, very briefly, um, what, what did we learn? Certainly that ThoughtCloud is not an answer to the feedback problem, um, but the, the richness and veracity of audio and video feedback collected allowed organizations to evidence the actions and feelings of their service users uh, beyond what they had initially commissioned feedback about, and further, that there was an opening up of a new channel for information flow and potentially for dialogue as well. Uh, the use of video in particular allows for greater transparency uh, when people are leaving feedback and made it clear when people were supported by a third party if it is indeed their view or one that is being filtered. Um, however, we do uh, acknowledge that with the potential uh, to share sensitive issues and for those to be shared widely, um, we need to address who has ownership over that feedback, who will take responsibility for it to be treated with the care that it deserves and ensure that service users can leave feedback safely and securely and share what they really want to about the services that are important to them. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, the, the organizations that participated, uh, as well as everyone that supported uh, the research at Open Lab um, and my co-authors as well, and all of you. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions.